There's really no messing around when it comes to SpaceX's work ethic. In fact, there's rarely a dull moment around Starbase either. After just one day from the firing test, SpaceX lifted Booster 9 off the launch mount and mounted it onto the transport stand. It'll be returned to the South Texas Star Factory. This is certainly not bad news for B9, and before I delve into the reasons why, take a look at these stunning photos. If you could describe this in just one word, which word would you choose? Mine would be amazing. This genuinely showcases the remarkable advancements in the field of rocket science. But enough distractions. Back to why we're really here. The most reasonable explanation is that SpaceX brought the Super Heavy Booster back to the factory to have its Raptors checked and maybe even wrap some of them up. In case you didn't know, which is probably a a good time to remind you to hit the bell so you'll never miss out on updates from us, the recent test did not run for the full duration. Mind you, a full duration test firing isn't that long when we consider it at face value. Only 5 seconds, that's all. However, B9 only lasted 2.74 seconds, according to SpaceX's webcast. Moreover, four of the rocket's 33 main Raptor engines shut down prematurely. This indicated that SpaceX is still struggling with the reliability of its Raptor engines despite intense work to improve their performance. This rocket is powered by Raptor 2 engines, and SpaceX is currently developing the next version, Raptor 3, to address reliability issues. In all honesty though, having four engines shut down isn't good when you're this late into the race, especially given that there is no ability to jumpstart the ones on the outer ring. That said, I still hold every ounce of confidence that SpaceX SpaceX will fix these problems. But replacing some engines is certainly not the only reason B9 has been brought back to the Mega Bay, considering they've done it many times before right on the launch pad. Booster 9 will probably be re-examined. If everything turns out fine, then it can receive its crown. This crown isn't just for show, however, as it's one of the most crucial components of the Starship system, and could be vital in the next ITF. That's right, I'm talking about the hot staging ring. Which, if you think about it, it's more like a waistband or belt than a crown. But wouldn't that mean all pants have crowns? Sorry, intrusive thoughts. Yes, a hot staging ring will be added starting with Booster 9 to simplify the stage separation procedure during flight. But another reason for moving B9 is to double check the water deluge system under the OLM. It went through a gauntlet, or a crucible even, from B9's 20 29 engine firing, and it didn't even get to the 3 second mark either. That's just the kind of power we'd expect from SpaceX's leviathan of a heavy lift vehicle. It's unclear exactly how much water was discharged during the full pressure spray, but needless to say, it's definitely nothing to scoff at. This is a major step toward making the launch infrastructure ready to support a second test flight of the world's most powerful rocket. During the previous ITF, the heat and energy from the Super Heavy Booster's 33 Raptor engines cratered as in dug a hole into the ground underneath the OLM and generated chunks of concrete and other types of debris that damaged the orbital launch mount severely. In any case, depending on the reasoning behind Booster 9 being back at the factory, there's still a precedent for it returning to the launch site as early as next week. On the other hand, if major work or repairs on the pad are required, it could be weeks before SpaceX returns the first stage to the launch pad. Given that the full wet dress rehearsals and one or several 33 engine static fires standing between Booster 9 and flight readiness will be riskier and more challenging than any other test the prototype has completed to date, there is no real chance that Starship will be ready for its second orbital launch this month, as Musk promised. Of course, the timing of the next Starship flight test is not entirely up to SpaceX. The company still must receive a green light from the US Federal Aviation Administration, the regular later with authority over all rocket launches, which grounded Starship after the last test resulted in the rocket exploding in mid-air. Grounding the rocket was entirely expected and routine given the way the test concluded, but SpaceX still needs regulatory approval before the next flight test. SpaceX is also a co-defendant with the FAA in a lawsuit over the agency's environmental review of Starship.
Starbase and the Starship Launch Program overall. That lawsuit, filed by environmental and indigenous groups in May, alleges that the FAA failed to fully consider the environmental effects of SpaceX's activity in the area. While the lawsuit is still in the very earliest of stages, it could threaten to keep Starship grounded for years. 2024, coincidentally, is when the first piloted launch of Boeing's off-delayed Starliner crew capsule is slipping to due to ongoing work to test and even replace certain components and infrastructure. Mark Nappy, Boeing's Starliner program manager, emphasized that the parachute's functionality will influence the potential launch timeline. According to the current projections, the spacecraft is set to be prepared by early March of the following year. However, this doesn't imply a specific launch date in March, only that it indicates that the spacecraft's readiness should be around that point. Determining the actual launch date for the crew flight test mission involves a collaboration among Boeing, NASA, and United Launch Alliance, or the ULA, the company responsible for the Atlas V rocket that will propel the Starliner. This evaluation process considers factors such as the space station's crew and cargo schedules, availability of boosters, and other relevant aspects. Steve Stitch, NASA's commercial crew program manager, acknowledged the desire for a definitive launch date. He noted that the vehicle is expected to be prepared around March, a month when the Russians typically rotate their Soyuz spacecraft and crews. This timing intersects with cargo flights and coordination with the ULA is essential before pinpointing a specific launch date. Assuming the CFT mission proceeds in 2024 during March or April without significant setbacks, Boeing could achieve certification for operational space station crew rotation missions by the close of 2024. Upon certification, NASA intends to conduct one crew rotation mission using Crew Dragon and another using Starliner annually until the International Space Station program concludes in 2030. Stitch emphasized the aim of having two distinct and diverse space transportation systems. He originally outlined the plan to complete the crew flight test and certification work for Boeing followed by alternating flights, one by Boeing and the other by SpaceX for crew rotations each year. Despite the challenges posed by the delays and associated costs, Mark Nappy affirmed Boeing's unwavering commitment to the Starliner project, and perhaps a bit of that commitment is to keep shareholders confident in Boeing's ability to deliver on a promise. He pointed out that the project's hardware has been secured for the scheduled flights, including the crew flight test and the six subsequent flights. Furthermore, opportunities for additional flights beyond the initial six are available with other customers, reaffirming Boeing's ongoing dedication to the endeavor. If the crew flight test does occur in spring or early summer of 2024, that will be nearly four years since SpaceX conducted their Demo 2 launch to the ISS, adding yet another notch on the scoreboard for SpaceX, which was considered to be the underdog at the time, or the David to Boeing's Goliath. The first operational crewed flight may not even come until 2025. Even so, Boeing is contracted for six crewed missions to the International Space Station. Meanwhile, SpaceX and NASA just named the crew eight members and are scheduled to launch in 2024 at the earliest. The next flight, Crew 7, will be launched later this month on the 23rd. When it flies, Crew 7 will bring four people to the final frontier. NASA's Jasmine Mokbelli, Andreas Mogesen of the European Space Agency, Japan's Satoshi Furukawa, and Russian cosmonaut Konstantin Borisov. They'll be riding aboard a SpaceX Dragon capsule named Endurance, with their destination, the ISS. NASA has not released when Endurance will dock with the orbiting lab, but that usually takes place about a day after launch, which would mean that docking will occur on August 24th. Currently, Crew-6 is expected to return to Earth on August 25th, but that is subject to there being enough time for a handover between the two SpaceX crews. Crew-7 will be the seventh operational astronaut mission for NASA that SpaceX sent to the ISS. Since SpaceX has other customers, this will be the 11th time the company has sent people to space. Other missions include the Demo-2 test mission to the ISS in 2020, the private Inspiration-4 flight to Earth orbit in September of 2021, and the Axe-1 and Axe-2 missions to the station in April of 2022 and May of 2023. Axe-1 and Axe-2 are run by the 
Houston-based company Axiom Space. NASA officials said that the adjusted Crew-7 launch date will take other ISS activities into account, including the forthcoming launches of the Cygnus cargo spacecraft from Northrop Grumman and the Roscosmos Progress cargo spacecraft. Both should launch to the ISS in the coming weeks, the statement said. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.